All right, little update on the rig CNC. Uh, I've made quite a few changes to it. Most of them are, you know, bolt on or fairly straightforward. Nothing substantial to the main design. Um, I have remounted this Hitachi router uh, to be a little bit more rigid. I realized that I could use the same mounting plate and kind of sneak it up on the side, and that brings it much closer to kind of the, the central uh, support. You know, and it, in the name of reducing and shortening load paths, this makes it significantly more rigid. Um, I guess I didn't have a screw here that's a little loose. Um, but I also added one of these uh, Saunders Machine Works fixture plates, and oh man, is this thing sweet. Uh, it dramatically, dramatically increased uh, how much I wanted to use the mill, because I think fixturing is probably the worst part for me, uh, and this makes it just a no-brainer. You, you put kind of whatever raw stock you have in here, and you mill a bunch of stuff, uh, and you know, it's, it kind of takes that out of the pain equation. So that's more or less the update on rig, rig CNC. Um, basically bolted this on, bolted this on. Mill is way more fun to use now. Um, the material removal rate with this guy is easily, you know, one and a half and it still sounds great, which means I can push it a bit more before I start getting uh, any real chatter. But the a bigger update is kind of the reason I originally started making this was I wanted to do injection molds and I have recently acquired and have begun testing uh, one of the micro molders. So this is a Kickstarter campaign, I guess deliverable, um, and you can see that in here I've got some aluminum tooling which was entirely done on the rig CNC. So uh, there's some really fine detail stuff in there, there is uh, you know, an Etsy shop that it's our Etsy shop. Um, there's a very tiny groove in there. Uh, the, the end part from this tool is one of these. Uh, this has some runner on it still, but it's a, a Dungeons and Dragons uh, base. Yeah, kind of nerdy, but I guess on brand. Um, and this here, all of this tooling, all of it, was done on the rig. Uh, it was an absolute dream to do with the Saunders Machine Works, you know, not pallet system, but their, their clamping system. Uh, this is called a mud box, which it's a multi-use, I don't remember what the D stands for, but essentially these plates can come out uh, and this main frame stays in the molder. Uh, and it just makes it a little bit easier to swap things out and keep things aligned. Uh, and it, it, hopefully increases the utility of the um, molder itself. Uh, here's a there's a finished one. So you can see uh, it's just a simple little circle, but our uh, let me get this to focus. You can see our Etsy shop is on that. So the text is all legible. There's a you know ejector pin on the side there and you just put it down. Setting it up is pretty easy. Uh, I've got a it's aired out right now because the parts were getting stuck. There are a pr parameters for each of the tools. So this is tool one. There's a bunch of parameters here that I basically figured out experimentally. Um, there's some guidelines on materials and stuff, but you more or less stick the tool in and start trying to squirt plastic into it and adjust as it as you see it fail in different ways. Um, so I will hit go and then I'll explain some of the other things that are going on. So hit start. Platen is going to start moving forward. Uh, right now it is checking the ejector pin location. It's going to continue to move forward, basically stop right here-ish. Uh, and then it'll advance very slowly to get some decent clamping pressure. That's it advancing. Now it's going to do some injection. You can see that. There's an auger in here that is pushing hot plastic into the tool. Uh, so it is now filled. It's a pretty small tool. Part of the parameters is cooling. So right now this is a countdown clock for the actual cooling of the tool. So it's going to count down to zero and then the part will open back up. Um, I am having some issues right now and these are more kind of design issues than anything wrong with the rig or the micro molder. But these parts are sticking into the side A and realistically I want them to stick to side B because I have this whole ejector plate assembly which is supposed to make this more automatable. Um, but you'll see here, so the parts are stuck on side A um, 
to fix that, I just need to go back into this part of the tool and add some features that will help grip it. So usually it's an undercut or something that just the plastic wants to shrink onto. So you can see here, it's, it's attempting to eject the part, but the part is not on that side. So and that's, that's when it errors out, because it, it's just basically saying, hey, if you ran another part right now, you would crash into the part that exists in the tool. Um, and I've been just pulling these out with a pair of pliers. It's not a big deal. But I'll, I'll at some point, go in here and kind of edit that. But that's more of a general shop update. The rig CNC is uh, you know, kind of fulfilling its main purpose, which was to design and build stuff like this for me. Um, Plastic-wise, using polypropylene. This is a polypropylene pellet meant for rock tumbling, but it, it's all the same raw material. So this was cheap and easy to get on Amazon. Um, and yeah, I'm really just kind of testing. There's, there's a bunch of things that I want to change about this, um, but for now, you know, it, it's something that I can play with. Um, all right, there you go. So you can see the surface finish uh, leaves quite a bit to desire. And you can also see that there's some, a little bit of flash on the sides and stuff. Um, but this is basically mill, you know, off the mill. There's all kinds of chatter. And all of this chatter is actually from the uh, pocket NC. I was running it probably more aggressively than it is designed to be run. Uh, so there's all kinds of chatter and in a quote-unquote production tool uh, I'll have to slow things down. But the intent, I can show the tool, is that uh, the these guys here, these little components, are inserts. So those are separate pieces of aluminum and I can take this whole tool off and unscrew it from the back and place in new ones. And this surface here, which is what ends up being the top surface of the bases, uh, can be swapped out for more interesting textures. So, you know, I can do a dirt path or grass or something more interesting. And that, that is something that I'm planning on doing with the Pocket NC at the moment, but I, I suppose the rig could do it. Um, but you know, this is this, these are the surfaces that are creating that rough texture. So right now it's just kind of rough filed. Uh, I do intend to make it more interesting, but for testing purposes it doesn't really matter, and it's way faster to mill out you know basically a, a coin that has one ugly side than it is to you know do two sides that are very precise and fit in bores and stuff. Um, but that's a general kind of update. Um, loving this thing, loving this thing, loving that thing. Um, I guess more toys, more better. But thanks for watching. That's about it. Bye.